ride with me in my foul life. Here we are. We're back at you live from the This Life Ain't For Everybody studio. We bring you another episode of the Foul Life podcast. I'm excited about this one. We're bringing on. I don't know if this humbles me, but it excites me so much. I want to stay humble no matter what. So I'm trying to press the fact that when I get news like this, that it doesn't humble me because humility is so important to keep daily in life. But we have a new partner coming on, Sig Sauer. And we are going to embark on a podcast series with Sig to talk about everything. We're going to call this the Sig Sauer Peace of Mind podcast the foul life. And we are going to talk about what having peace of mind means to myself, our guests, people that write in our listeners. We want to hear from everybody, but peace of mind means a lot. Um, we have freedoms. We are allowed to hunt. We're allowed to fish. We're allowed to go out in the outdoors and do anything we want from snow skiing to water skiing and wakeboarding to volleyball, to karate lessons to you name it. We can wake up and take our families to enjoy everything that our great country of the United States of America has to offer. And that peace of mind comes from our military. It comes from peace of mind to be able to protect our homes, our loved ones, our family, our friends. If something happens or something takes place to put our lives in jeopardy or in danger, we want to have a peace of mind that we have taught ourselves, we've been instructed, we've taken classes and courses that give us that peace of mind and that confidence to defend our homes and protect our families. Um, There's so much that comes with those words, peace of mind. I want to have a peace of mind that our legacy of hunters is protected, that our that our culture of being an American hunter is protected because it's not an entitlement. It's a privilege to hunt. I want to be able to protect those rights. Our second amendment rights, the national rifle association, safari club, international organizations like California waterfowl that fight every day behind the scenes for hunter rights, shooter rights, second amendment rights and Sig Sauer is part of all of this from military to police officers in blue line, to first responders, to home defense, to protecting our families, protecting our automobiles, protecting our possessions. That's what peace of mind means. I want to call this podcast the Sig Sauer Peace of Mind podcast brought to you by the foul life and this life ain't for everybody. And my first guest is none other than a police officer, somebody that believes in everything that I just spoke on and somebody that I feel it, from watching him shoot, he knows how to shoot, trust me. And more importantly, well, I don't know if it's more important, but he knows how to instruct and teach shooting to all ages, male, female, kids, adults, doesn't matter. I've watched him do it many times and he believes in Sig Sauer. And I don't want to make it sound like we are doing a commercial for Sig Sauer, but my guest, Jared Woodward, Woodward truly believes in the Sig Sauer culture, the brand. Is that fair to say, Jared? Absolutely. Um, I've, I've carried a SIG for 20 plus years now. Um, it's pretty much the only pistol that I've, I've worked with. Um, when you say SIG in that industry or in any of that, like it's one of the top brands, if not the top brand that we have. What makes you say that as far as I want to start off with like, well, I guess it would be components or the construction, but talk to me a little bit about why somebody that I feel that police officers put their lives in the, in harm's way or danger every single time they clock in. Yep. Okay. I don't know uh, if you actually clock in, but <laughs> when you go <clears throat> to start a shift and you're on patrol or you get called out, whether you're SWAT or whether you're on the beat or whether it's just an, uh, just a, pulling a car over on responding to an accident something could happen if somebody's in an argument over an accident responding to a traffic stop pulling somebody over um there's we've seen it what's going on with you know law enforcement throughout the last five years or more in our country throughout a long time really but why would you say that about sig or why would you hold that carry that gun in your holster and depend on it daily with what you do so the gun that i'm carrying now is my second sig um i've probably got in the excess of 10 to twenty thousand rounds somewhere in that realm not one malfunction 
not one malfunction. And for me, for having it as a duty gun, a gun that I'm going to have to use to protect myself, having a malfunction in a gunfight is probably the worst thing that you could ever imagine. Having a gun go click instead of bang when you need it to go bang, that's that's the biggest thing. The reliability for the SIGs, um, like I said, this is my second one. The first one I had was like the old traditional um, 226, and it, I mean, it worked flawlessly. The only reason I moved to a, a newer model is I went to a single action only pistol of theirs. Um, and so it's the same trigger press, same trigger weight every time versus the old one that I had that was a double action to a single action. Um, I just think their construction, um, it, it, it stands the test. I mean, you look at our government has carried them, certain military uh, Branch. eight branches have carried that gun, the gun that I carried for the longest time. And now they won the one of the biggest military contracts, the pistol contract for them. They all carry either the M17 or the M18, which is along their lines of the 320, which has come out to law enforcement. Um, I really think some of the stuff that SIG did in their design and application of that new 320 that they've released, I don't know, probably what, six, seven, eight years ago, somewhere like in that realm. I mean, it was revolutionary that you could change all the grip modulars. Not everybody's built the same. Um, your hands are built different. Well, they've realized, hey, we have to make this gun if we want to sell it to branches of the military, law enforcement, we have to make it fit everybody. It's not one size fits all. Um, I instruct females that have smaller hands. That gun, I can get it to work in their hand because we can change the grip modular in like two minutes or less. I can have a new grip modular on their gun and they're, they're perfect with it. They're like, oh, this feels so much better. Um, I, so I think it's that. Just me personally, um, <clears throat> when I've always picked up a SIG, um, it just the feel. I'm like, oh, man, this feels great, and which is part of the reason I carried it, because I liked the way it felt in my hand. Um, and that's, that goes to the confidence. If it feels good to you, you're, you're probably going to be a little bit more confident with, like, I really like the way this feels. I like the way that works out. And most people don't have the opportunities that I've had where I've I've got to play with a bunch of different weapons and see what do I like better about this or that or this or that. Um, most people go into a gun store and they, they hold them for a couple seconds and they're like, uh, I like the way that one looks. Not always the best idea because I don't care what the gun looks like. I care about functionality, um, the way it shoots, the way it feels to me. Um, those are the things that I look at. Um, I could get you the prettiest looking gun, and if you don't shoot it well, what's the point? I get you the ugliest looking gun, and if you can shoot X's all day long with it, that's the gun for you. Um, I just I think their the reliability, their craftsmanship on most of them are like that's the that's the reason I went to the Sig. Um, I carry a Sig off duty now with their 365 line. Um, I think they revolutionary that size of it too. That small of a compact gun, they're giving people 10 to 15 rounds. That's hard to do in such a small compact gun. Um, and they were able to do it. I will tell you, I almost shoot my smaller gun better than I shoot my large frame gun. That's how good the balance is on those guns. And that's why I, I've always gravitated towards the SIG line. Um, I bought some of their other lines, like their MPX. Um, I think for an officer or a SWAT guy that's needing a subcompact uh, sub gun, um, it might be the best sub gun on the market. I've, I've got a bunch of different ones. I've played with a lot of the SWAT rigs that we have out, and I, I still think it performs better than a lot of the other guns that are out there, the the MP5, I think the the ergonomics of the MPX line is second nature to people. We're so we're getting so used to running an AR15 type platform rifle. Sig was smart. They're like, let's keep 
the ergonomics of an AR-15 because most people know how to run an AR-15 nowadays because it's, it's a very popular platform of a gun. Why change it? Why make, why reinvent the wheel to a point? Let's just fix certain things that will make it better, like ambidextrous uh, controls and things like that. That's what they've done to these guns. Um, so I, I'm always, I've always been impressed with SIG, um, which is why when, when we did our CCW class, that's what I brought out for, for you guys. I brought all my, all my SIGs that I had. Um, and, and we talked about, Hey, talking to him to see if you could get on to work with them just cause I'm that, I'm that pleased with that company. Um, I, I, there are other gun companies out there that I think do a good job, but I think total encompassing of the firearms where it comes down to suppressors, ammunition. I think SIG's done a good job at all that. I think they've done a very good job. When you start talking about everything <clears throat> that you just said, why you have the reasons why you have confidence in your SIG, right? The, the dependability, the versatility, the feeling in your hand, the, the way it's built, the everything, you know, aesthetics might not play that big of a role, but like the ambidextrous and stuff and the, the ability to the ease of use, I guess you would say, what about the confidence once the bullet leaves the barrel? What has SIG done to give, there's a lot of guns out there that have performed for years, military, police mm -hmm. officers, competition shooting, competitive shooters that hit the target. But is there everything that you just named? Is that why the, the balance and the economics of this gun? Is that why the consistency, the control, and the accuracy is there? Because when I watch you shoot, or when I shoot now, I, I can be very accurate with my Sig. You've taught me a, a lot of hints. John Shaw and Houston Shaw, Shaw shooting, have given me a lot of insight on you know everything from how to hold a pistol the right way, how to breathe, everything that goes into it, staying four feet and staying on paper for the first hour of a day, and how important important that is to mm -hmm. getting out there 15 yards or whatever the case might be. Why do you have confidence once the bullet's going down range? Uh, well, I think it's just the consistency in it. Everything feels the same. Like you're talking about the grip, everything being the same every time with your, your approach and your presentation of that gun. I think that the feel of it helps you do that with both of the, with most of their platforms that they have. I haven't shot every gun that SIG makes. They, they, they make an awful lot of variants. Um, but the ones that I have shot, uh, the, being able to get on target, just the presentation to me um, is natural for it. Like I've shot other guns, other manufacturers, and I have to kind of work a little bit to get on sites. Um, I have to m force myself to think versus with my SIGs that I've always had, just the pointing, I'm on target. Like I could draw, close my eyes, draw, close my eyes and open them up. And like, I can see right down the, the sights. It's just the comfort for me. Um, and I've had a lot of guys shoot my guns. They're like, oh, I just, and literally they leave the range and they're like, I got to go to the store and buy one of those. I, they, they just never shot them. Um, for a while there, I think SIG, for for some of the officers, they didn't buy them because they were little. They were a little on the expensive side. You're looking at you were looking at like the eight hundred dollar, eight fifty range, um, and a lot of guys they just didn't want to spend that much money. And I always argued with them. I'm like, listen, this is a tool of for us that's going to possibly have to be used to save us or save somebody else what's 850 worth to you at that point in time right. i mean if you if you shoot this gun better it feels better what's the what's the price point that you're i mean i get it I, we all have a financial setup but where does it go i mean if it was a, a an eight thousand dollar gun i go i get why you couldn't afford that but I go, you're adding 250 bucks maybe. And if it feels better and works better and it's more reliable, um, I would go with that, that platform. And there are a lot of, lot of platforms that we shoot that are reliable. Um, for instance, the Glock, I mean, it's, it's been around for a long time. Um, it's reliable. I don't like the way it feels to me. I don't like the way it shoots. I have to work 
to get on target because of the the grip angle in it. Where Sig and their 1911 style and, and 226, just their grip can't. It's natural to me. It's natural to a lot of shooters. Um, they all base a lot of their grip can't off the old Brownie 1911. Why, why reinvent the wheel to a point? And they, they did a great job. So that's where I think the consistency's there because it feels so good. I don't have to work at it. I can point and shoot at a certain distance and still hit my target, not even looking at sights, um, just because of it being that natural point. I mean, you take people, if they were just no, no weapon in their hand, just point your finger and point it at something, and you're going to be relatively clo close if you have some eye-hand coordination, right? That's where the SIG is for me. Um, and a lot of other shooters that I've given the SIG to, they're like, man, it just feels good when it's in my hand. And when I point it, it, it bounces right on target and I don't have to work at it. That's what it should be like. Um, if you're looking for something that you're going to use for self-defense, um, home defense, um, whatever in that aspect, it shouldn't be work. It should be natural because you're in a, you're going to, if it is in that instance that you're going to have to ha use it to defend yourself, you're in a very, very high stress situation. Your heart rate went from 70, 80, maybe 90 beats a second to 150, 160 in a split second, almost up to 200. You got to have something that just feels good and gets out on point to me. And that's why I go that way. When you start talking about, you make comments like, well, when I hand a gun to somebody, I let them shoot it. You do, you work with deputies, you work with um, young shooters, you're an mm -hmm. instructor in the young cadet program. Mm -hmm. You work with, I don't know if, I don't know if you, you know, train actual incoming officers, but I feel that you do. There's got to be a certain amount of confidence of telling a young officer coming in or a young cadet shooter coming in that you, you know, whether it's in the academy or whether it's at one of your instructional courses, there has to be a certain amount of responsibility with you putting your reputation and the precinct's reputation and the safety of incoming officers. To me, it's like, that's a big deal. Like you say it so easily, but to me, that's a big deal. Like, hey, this gun is what I rely on. And you're kind of like giving that validation of I'm 20 years on the force. I've shot this gun for 20 years. I've been involved in this, this, and that. To me, that's a big deal because you're actually like telling that guy, like, look, I believe in this and it might be worth your time to check it out. So you're telling me that it's no issue for you to say, look at this, feel it, yep. shoot it, point it, point your finger, no work needed. Just it's on target, just like that. Because, right, I mean, what I'm saying is ringing true with you, right? Like mm -hmm. you are putting your reputation and in, in the, in the PD's reputation on the line by saying, this is what I believe in. I, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say this is the gun that I carry if it wasn't what I carry. I mean, our department went. Honestly, we we used to issue Glocks. Our department went to the three twenty. That's what we issue people. If you're a new officer coming into our department, that's what we issue you. Um, I think our department believes in it that much. Our range master believes in that gun that much. Um, I think it's got a better trigger in it. Um, which means it's more consistent, better press. So it, you're getting that constant, that consistent break of the trigger at the right time. It's not sloppy. It's not squishy. Um, and I think that because SIG came out with such a good weapon, it's causing everybody else to go, oh, damn. If we don't step up our game, we might as well not even keep making some of our guns because they're going to keep taking our business. I want to make sure I had that right there. You're saying that your your department believed in the Glock at one time, but they've switched to the SIG because of what you're talking about? I think so, absolutely. But they, have they switched? We have switched. We don't issue the Glock anymore. Um, unless a shooter comes in and goes, I, I only want a Glock, and we have one in inventory that we'll give them. Um, so our department, the way that we do our setup is – we can issue you a gun that is the department's gun, but it's going to be this brand. Um, or you can buy your own. 
off of an approved weapons list that we have. And what we do to make an approved weapons list, we put it through the steps. We put it through the rigor tests and and cold and hot and tons of rounds through them to make sure they're going to function. Because if I'm giving you the gun and I'm telling you that this gun's perfect and it's it, it's super reliable and you have 100 malfunctions in it, that's not good. Like I don't want to put a gun out on the mark on the on our street for any officer that has malfunctions. So we want to make sure that that gun's tested with all these different ammos that we could be using um, to make sure it's going to function correctly and we're not going to have issues. Because if it doesn't function right and an officer gets in a shooting and his gun's not working, well, he's behind way behind the curve. Now he's got a weapon that's supposed to help him protect himself or protect somebody else, and it doesn't work. So we put them through their tests. Like we put, we have a certain criteria that we will run through uh, what we call a T and E test and evaluation period on a weapon. And if it doesn't pass, it doesn't pass. Then we won't clear that. It won't be on our weapons list as an approved weapon because there's problems with it. It malfunctions. It jams at this because of this all the time. Well, that's we don't have a gun. We won't authorize guns that do that because it's not safe for our our officers. What about the all of the options out there for ammo? There's a lot of difficulty in getting ammo right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, well, we we don't need to go into the reasons why. Hopefully, it's starting to come back a little bit. But what about? the performance of a SIG with all of the different ammos, because sometimes like in shotgun shooting, that matters, right? The ounce, the weight, yep. everything that goes into the powder, you know, the capacity, the hotness, the temperature, all of that could get something, you know, to make the firing pin act different on the primer, whatever the case is, low base, high base and shotgun shooting. Does, does different manufactured ammo matter in a SIG? Does, is there something that people should be paying attention to when they're picking the ammo? Because in today's world, I, you know, the, the mindset is what? I'll take what I can get. Absolutely. You know, like I just want to go to a garage sale and buy everything you got, whether it's 50 years old or five days old. Yep. You know, does that matter with a SIG? Um, so I'll tell you this, based on my experiences, I've had is it two or three range masters now. And each one, each person has their own little I guess take or flare on what they need or what we what's better than others in ammunition. They'll get the spiel from this company that says, "Well, our our ammunition does this better," and they've tested and done whatever in that aspect. Um, so I, they've had different ammo that we've shot over the years, different manufacturers, different weights of grain bullets, um, different primers in them, all sorts of stuff. I've never had one of my SIGs malfunction shooting any of the ammo. I've even shot reloads of people's. Never had a malfunction on them. I can feel the difference in certain like hot loads um, where they've got a little bit more powder to them. So like a P plus round or something like that. I can feel it in the recoil just a touch. Um, But I've net, like I said, I've never had a malfunction in any of them that's why i go this is my gun why would i why would i go to a gun that malfunctions in something with it it only likes 124 grain bullets made from this manufacturer well, what if we're not shooting that what if my range master decides well this is the new and improved caliber weapon and ammunition and it doesn't cycle very well through my gun then, then I'm in. That, then I've got problems because that's the ammunition that we're authorized to carry on duty, and my gun doesn't like it. Uh, so that's that's another reason I've liked the Sig. I've not had one issue shooting cheap ammunition to some of the very best. Shot that's at all. That's a big deal. Huge deal for me. Um, and like I, even the MPX. So I've had my SWAT buddies take mine because they were looking at maybe switching over to those so that they could have a, a smaller sub gun for entries or in a backpack. Um, now at some of the crowded venues, they'll have those guys out. Um, I've had them shoot everything through that, suppressed, not suppressed, no issues. No issues at all. No issues with that gun at all. Um, and that's why I think 
Honestly, it's it's one of the best guns. It, it stands that test with the MP5. The MP5 has always been the top notch uh, sub gun that, that officers or military will carry. To me, that gun stands right next to it all day long. In a, in a world today that it's so easy to see advertising and marketing going on in ways that we weren't used to it 20 yeah, years ago to absolutely. where now everybody's got credibility. Everybody is a master. Everybody is an ambassador or a quote unquote influencer. And they make money off of their social media platforms. It's, it's very important to say that we are part of the SIG family because we believe in the brand. We believe in everything that we're talking about today. But more importantly, a paid advertisement is a paid advertisement. Okay? You yeah, 100%, can, right? <laughs> SIG can go buy an ad on any show they want, whether it's on TV, whether it's a print ad, whether it's a podcast ad, a radio ad. They can go to Joe Rogan and buy an ad saying SIG Sour, uh, defend, you know, whatever it is. This is validation. The reason I wanted to make you the first guest is that, to me, this is the ultimate validation, right? Like, yeah. that's the ultimate of somebody that puts their their life in that way every day, of harm's way, danger, your family, you got a wife, you have a daughter, they're thinking about you all the time when you're out there. There's a lot of toxicity when it comes to, to what you do. There's a lot of mm -hmm. opportunity for something to go wrong. I'm not trying to say that <clears throat> don't become a police officer. I want everybody to consider becoming a police officer. I think it's a very honorable position in a job and a career. We both know that it is. But it seems to me like there's so much that goes into the thought process of becoming a police officer or going into the military, right? You've seen the Absolutely. military commercials of like parents being worried that when their son or daughter comes to them and says, I'm going into one of the branches of our armed forces, mm -hmm. whether it's Navy or Air Force or Marines or, or um, Army, this is a validation of saying, look, I'm not paying Jared Wooder to come on here. You shoot, Sig. I've watched it. That's why I wanted to have you on here. I want people to understand that there, there's a difference in a paid advertisement and somebody saying, yeah, this is what I defend my home with. This is what yep. I have on my in my holster when I'm defending the community and protecting myself. Yep. Because there are such thing as bad guys. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there is. <laughs> a lot and of it, them. It, it's job security for me. If we didn't have any of them, they wouldn't need me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head in that aspect. Cause I see it a lot. And I've talked to people that are, that work for whatever company that come out and do a, a little demo for us. Um, they're getting paid to push this weapon. That's what they, that's their job. And I understand their job. Um, I've carried SIG for over, like I said, over 20 years, not because SIG was paying me to carry it. I actually paid SIG. <laughs> They don't pay you. I don't get paid to do that. No, absolutely. I don't get paid by SIG. No. Um, and I believe in that weapon platform that much that I put it on. I, I would put it in every officer's hands that I could, honestly. So talk to me about how I started this show, Jared Woodward, is this isn't going to be a, a podcast of here's why we use SIG. Here's why SIG is the best, Okay. SIG doesn't need Chad Belding or Jared Woodward telling the world that SIG is the best, okay? SIG has a reputation that's unbreakable. They love the fact that Jared Woodward relies on SIG for over two decades of defending himself as a professional police officer and his family, and now it's your concealed carry, your, um, your choice of concealed carry. It's your choice of instructional guns when you teach concealed carry courses, when you teach young cadets. <coughs> Excuse me. The smoke is killing me, by the way. These fires. Thank God for firefighters, too, and hot shots. Um, but the, the way I started this out about the culture, about the way that we have peace of mind, it's important to you, right? This is what SIG really means to me is that I want that peace of mind. I want companies like SIG that look at hunters and say, we want you to be able to Defend your family, defend your blind, defend your boat, defend your automobile, your truck, your car, whatever it is. D defend yourself if you choose to, to have a concealed carry permit, a CCW. The, the way that I started this off is very important to this because you, you have to understand that that all goes in to this equation 
of why we work with SIG and why SIG has the confidence to work with us, but more importantly, why we carry SIG. I want to be alive in 30, 40 years. And I'm not saying something's going to happen because in 45 years of life, nothing has happened to where I've had to pull, you know, and defend myself. You have in your job. All I'm saying is that if it did, I want to have that confidence and that feel and that everything that goes into it. And I also want to work with a company that believes in the culture of the American hunter, the outdoorsman, the family, kids, next generation, community, leadership, pride. I mean, this is a lot of the stuff that we're losing in my, in my daily view of life and responsibility and accountability. I don't see a whole lot of preparation or focus on this task at hand of, dude, we need to think about our next generations and what's going on here. And I feel that SIG has this in their best interest. And that's why we choose to work with them because they believe in this culture that we're talking about family, friends, home, security, defense, hunting, living off the land, being a conservationist, compassion for the animal, respect for the resource. SIG believes in all that. They might not be known as a, a, a gun like Benelli that we shoot our shotguns in that is actually used to kill a duck, right? But they believe in protecting hunters to be able to do that and to bring new blood and new generations into it. Does that make sense to you? They believe in protecting your rights. Yes. So what you Second should, Amendment rights. 100%. And, and you're right. They're not a big... If you looked at SIG, they're not a big hunting gun. But they they see that direction i i mean you look at their their bolt action rifle that they just came out with um they see the needs for these things they see they see what the industry and what the citizens are looking for what what do you guys want what would better benefit you guys um i mean they could build a, a military weapon all day long yeah okay great for our military but they also see the need for our everyday citizen having to protect themselves. And it, it might not ever happen, which let's pray to God that it doesn't happen to anybody. Um, but it's the what if. Mm -hmm. It's that what if. Like, what if something bad? Hey, we leave here today. And what if there's a road raging idiot that does something stupid? Um, do we want to take it to that level? I, I like when we taught you guys in the CCW class. Our our goal is to get keep you out of those problems. Do whatever you can to avoid issues where you might have to use deadly force. It's the same thing in my job. I mean, we do de-escalation. We do all sorts of things to try to avoid a deadly force encounter. Everybody should be doing that. Not always do you have that that opportunity, that that the time to avoid a deadly force encounter. Um, and that's, that's it. I, I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head in the aspects. It's SIG knowing that citizens, they have, to, they have to be able to protect themselves. I, as a police officer, I'm not in your back pocket all day long with you. It well, would be let's great. Let's talk about that real quick. I want you to keep that thought going. But let's just be honest about the reaction time with larger cities Mm -hmm. the the reality that police forces could be shrinking because of the black eye that they've taken and the support that they've been given, which is BS. What is the reaction time? Really, you know this. What if something happens in my home? You're looking at probably minimum of eight to 10 minutes before somebody gets here. That's too long. It's a long time. I'm not time. saying it's your fault, but you got to do something in the you interim. You got to be right? able to take care of yourself. And and whether you're, what we always try to promote is not being the hotheads when we teach those classes. And I got a gun now. I'm Billy Badass because I got a gun. I can carry a gun. Uh, that's not the, 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 the angle that we want to promote. We want to promote the safety and, hey, if you have to, try to get your family out out of harm's way before you have to use Yeah, don't it. try to make an excuse to use your gun. Yeah, that's exactly. not what you're having that's not, CCW that's for. That's not what, and, and, and unfortunately in my job, we see it a lot. We see a lot like, why didn't you just leave? Well, I, I shouldn't have to. And I'm like, I get you shouldn't have to leave, 
But why would you want to be put into this situation? Right. Why? Why push the, the... It's the old analogy of the bar fight. Like, yeah. is it fun? Well, maybe. Does it hurt? Heck yes. Are you going to get in trouble? Probably. Are you going to get mm-hmm. 86? You might get arrested. It, the ego, the brain, the, the thing that gets in the way is our our mentality and mm-hmm. our psyche and our inability to just be like, you know what? Because... It's not worth it. It's you, just not worth it sometimes. Yeah, like I've been out with the best fighters in the world, and I've never seen them just go and beat somebody up. They don't get in fights no. when they would they would mop up anybody in the bar, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, mixed martial arts and boxing and the in the in the in this the mentality is respect Absolutely. and love and compassion. If I have to use it, I will. Krav Maga, my instructor in Krav Maga, Neil, you might have to use it. This isn't something that you go out and show off and just go up and grab somebody. No. It's not like that, but the same thing is the mentality of the gun owners. Like, don't you don't just make an excuse to have it. It's there to protect you. It's a responsibility. It's a big responsibility. Big responsibility. Huge. And we've got people. Unfortunately, we have people out there that they don't have the know it all and, and and the whereabouts to. Hey, this isn't a good. This isn't a good decision. They make a bad decision, and it kind of honestly, I think it affects greatly affects. The Second Amendment, the the gun owners, because you have a gun owner that makes a really, 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 really bad decision, and they put themselves in that situation, and then then you have all the anti gunners that are like, you see, you see, this is why we shouldn't what have guns. Happen, and what else is it happening all the time? Hunting. Mm-hmm. One guy or one girl does something that puts a black eye on it, absolutely, and then it's hunters as a whole. One out of two million people make a bad decision. It's, it's a like, privilege. It is a privilege. It's a privilege. Here, it's we have the right to bear arms. We have the right to shoot, but we also have the privilege of being able to go and take a CCW course and being instructed on how to defend our homes mm-hmm. or defend ourselves, right, yep. and our families. That's a privilege. That's not something that's taken lightly. And it's 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 us. Like Remy always says, it's going to be one of us as hunters that get this privilege revoked. We have to fly this flag and be careful and do it with the right mentality. And that's when you start thinking about gun control and all of the antis and you see the murders or the homicide rate in cities being killed. What is the answer? Everybody blames the gun. Everybody blames the gun industry. I've had guns. I have. I'm not going to say how many guns you or I have uh on different properties. But it's more than one, <laughs> and, and it's not less than ten, and it's it's a lot, and nothing's ever happened with and it. And not one of those guns has gone walking down the street by itself, Never. randomly shooting at people. Never, right? I mean, Never. It, it's the person behind the gun that is responsible for what the gun does. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But going back to your, it's a privilege to take certain courses. Um, one thing that I always like to tell people: I really think there's a ton of people out there that teach, and, and I'm not. I I don't think that every instructor is the know-it-all about something. Um, I think there's good instructors, there's bad instructors. I really push people to vet who they're going to go take a course from. Don't just find the first guy and be like, yeah, I'm going to go take a course from him. Look at what their credentials are. Look at where they got their training from. Um and look at their success stories on from people that have said, hey, th- this guy taught me a, a whole lot about this. I was very uncomfortable with guns, and now I'm super comfortable, whatever it is. Because there are a lot of guys that they go get their NRA. It's just a simple course to get an instructor set up on, but they don't really know what they're doing teaching-wise. They don't know the laws. They don't know um, really how to instruct on ailments shooting ailments they're just like well you you pull the gun and you shoot left all the time i'm like why is he shooting left they don't teach that um so i going back to that i I really stress to to people vet who you're getting lessons from because just the joe blow that's teaching out of his garage might not be the best instructor for you um look at the, the 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 credentials that they have and why they're an instructor as being an instructor like you are, is there a hint that you could give people? Again, this is going back to the <laughs> ammo shortage. Uh huh. You don't want to go out and just plink right now, right? It's expensive yeah. to plink right now. It's ex- very expensive. As sad as that is to say, it is. It's people are holding on to their ammo. Mm hmm. Um, they're hoarding ammo. People also buy ammo just to buy it because yeah. they're like, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get it again. Kind of like toilet paper during COVID. Yes. Um, 
Is there things that you would tell somebody like me of, here's some things you can do without oh, actually sending a bullet down range? 100%. Um, there's a huge dry fire drills and stuff that you can do that I think is more beneficial than going and sending a bullet down range. Work on the fundamentals with no bullet in the gun. Work on your draw, your presentation of that weapon, um, your sight picture, your sight alignment, and then your trigger press. Working on all those different things with not one round. Um, buying dummy rounds, ultimately, and running and doing reload drills with no live ammo. You can do it. It doesn't cost you any money after you've bought your gun and your dummy rounds to do it. Put a dot on the wall and work on your draw and your presentation on how to get on the target as quickly and as smoothly as you can. And then your trigger press. You shouldn't see your sights moving off that, that target as you press your trigger. Um, we see a lot of it because it's a flinch. It's a, that The gun going bang causes people to flinch. They're trying to combat or beat the recoil. So they're flinching the gun. They're jerking the gun just about the time that that round goes off. It causes them to be off of target. So doing dry drills, there is no bang. You can work on the, the smoothest trigger press and the trigger reset as you can. Um, airsoft. There's a big push for a lot of people with airsoft guns. Um, a little less expensive SIG makes them, um, a bunch of other companies make them. The triggers and all those are almost identical, if not identical, to the real weapon. And it's shooting a little plastic BB. The draw is the same. I mean, the construction weight on these guns, identical to a real firearm. So why not get something along those lines and practice with that? It's way cheaper. They have BB guns. A lot of these companies are building BB guns that are the exact same weight, and that and it's cheaper. I mean, you're buying a a thousand BBs for like eight bucks, ten bucks, twelve bucks, whatever it is. Shoot that. Nothing changes. The only difference is is recoil. You don't get the recoil from a BB gun or the airsoft gun that you would get with shooting a nine millimeter. The right. recoil is different. But all the functions in that gun, all the manipulations in that gun, identical. Get familiar with how to do a mag change, how to do a um, flip your safety off if there is a safety on your gun. Um, get to where that's second nature and you're not having to think about it. It's just, this just happened. My gun ran dry and I dropped the mag and I put a new one in it, lickety split. That's the things that you can work with no ammunition at all. I think I think that's one of the major things of, I guess it would be called protocol. Mm -hmm. Like I think that shooters should establish a protocol. It might not have to be daily, but maybe once a week, twice a week to where no matter what you're, you know. It's a it, practice routine. Yeah, like I think reloading is important. I think draw is important. Mm -hmm. Finger placement on the trigger and how to get it there without, you know, taking too long and, and squeezing too hard, all, all of the stuff that you're talking about, protocol is important. Like you get protocol in anything from, oh, I, mean, I have a bad back. Well, physical therapist can only do so much for an hour a day. It gives you protocol or she gives you protocol to do. And then we go home. We're like, ah, shit, I'd rather just sit on the couch and put an ice bag on. Well, that's not protocol. Mm -mm. It's your gun sitting there. So yeah. I, I want to get in, you know, throughout these podcasts. So we're going to be talking about everything on these podcasts from we're going to do hunting podcast brought to you yeah, by yeah. SIG just because they're protecting our rights to go out and hunt the way we get to hunt or fishing or whatever we're going to talk about. But there are going to be certain episodes that are going to be dedicated to things like what caliber do you choose? How do you choose a caliber? Is a mm -hmm. 45 too big? Is a 380 too small? Is a is a nine millimeter the best or is a 40 the best? Like is a 357 dirty hairy style, 40, you know, 44 Magnum too. You know, we're going to talk about, you know, how to choose calibers and mm -hmm. But I also want to talk about protocol and why do we have that mentality of, well, it's the, the gun's there if I need it. Well, what if you, you know, you can't, te you know, there's all these sayings of like, well, are you up to par? Have you been practicing? Because it's, it's if a, I can hit a baseball, but if I went in the cage right now, I'd look like an idiot. It's a perishable skill. 
Yeah. Um, we see it. I see it with myself. If if I go for a two month layoff that I just haven't had the time to go out and really put rounds down range, I see it. I see the rust in my in my mechanics. You feel it. You see I, it. Everything, it huh? It's just not great. Um, so I I really you can do small round count training too. Hey, you only need fifty rounds. We're gonna do a bunch of different drills and a bunch of practice on stuff with 50 rounds. Um, so getting out, like he, every baseball player, that's why we have spring training for them, right? They, they, they get back up to par. They get back up to their, their level. Yep. Um, the professional shooters, they don't take long, long, long layoffs. They may take a long layoff in competitions, but they will be out practicing and working drills and dry drills and, and things like that just to keep their skills honed. They do it. They, they have to. So I want to get into things like choosing calibers, mm -hmm. protocol. What are some good drills? Like you talked about today and the dry firing and BBs and airsoft and all that stuff. I want to talk about the correct setup inside your master bedroom as parents. What do I do? Is it the safe, mm -hmm. one-touch fingerprint safe? Is it is it the guns in there with the magazine in it ready to go or is the magazine separate and like there's all kinds of mentality of like Absolutely. Well, I have kids it's responsibility what do I do with the gun during the day what do I do if the house cleaners are coming over mm -hmm. the responsibility the checklists there's all kinds of things that go through your mind as a parent as a person as a homeowner as somebody that has friends or somebody that entertains make a checklist like there's got to be a daily checklist of protocol whether it's practicing mm -hmm. or whether it's being responsible with this firearm you don't want to have a well damn it a what if one of those moments of like yeah. i could have prevented this right and th this stuff happens this is reality so sig is determined and focused they want to bring shed light on all of this of the messaging that goes into the responsibility of gun owning and what it means to have the right to shoot and how can we be better at it? How can we be better prepared? And how can our messaging help people be like, oh, I never thought of that. I want to think about things that I've never thought about. I want you to be able to come in and say, and I'm not saying that you might, can, are going to have time with your busy career to be on every episode, but I want you to be on as many as you can to, to have an, a sphere of influence of, well, did you think about this, Chad? Did you think about this part of it mm -hmm. when you... Put, when you had your gun here, it's between your mattresses. Well, what if this happens? Well, it's in this drawer. Well, what if this happens? You yeah. have this drawer, you have this door that comes into your house this way. You have this window here. Do you get an alarm system? Is it smart to have? Are these alarm systems worth the sh You know, Jared Absolutely. Woodward, you're a police officer. I want to go into alarm systems. <laughs> I want to see how the police are notified. And I just got a bill for a false alarm for 110 bucks from the county. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> somebody let off but, my alarm. But I want to get into all of this throughout this podcast series. You're hundred, I, I think you're, you're right on point with a lot of that podcast stuff. And you're right on point with SIG in the aspects. It's educational. They have a lot of classes that you could go take. And I see it only because I get the emails from it, from work stuff. Um, educational class. That's how to teach your kids gun safety from the very beginning. And uh, how, how to have confidence and not be scared of them. What's the number one thing that happens when somebody goes, my assistant, we won't say any names. She goes out and shoots. Oh my God, this is the greatest day of my life. The confidence, the like, mm -hmm. wow, I did that. I'm going to, get, I'm getting my permit. I'm getting a gun. I'm going to become responsible, right? That's the biggest reason I actually like teaching is seeing, like I don't, teaching somebody that's a, been a big shooter their entire life and they're, they're really, really good at it. Coming to sit with me and, and I'm not going to provide you that much like difference in your training. You're not going to see that big of a difference. Might, you might pick up one or two things from me. Where if I get a new shooter that's never shot before and they are, they're scared shitless of the gun. They're scared of the bang. They're scared of all of it. And by the end of the day, you see that big grin and they're, and they're just punching holes in the exact same spot and they're shooting great. That's what I enjoy. I enjoy taking that person that, unfortunately, when they pick up the gun for the first time, they couldn't hit the target if they were touching it to getting them by the end of the day going, wow, I get it now. And I go, we, and they, we teach them, Hey, you need to keep up on these skills. Um, like we've talked, I take the kids, uh, um, the, my junior cadet kids, uh, out 
I'll get them out to a thousand yards within a day on a rifle. And they're like, no way. And within the, by the end of the day, they're ringing steel at a thousand yards. It's that, it's that type of stuff that when they turn back and look at me and are like, oh my gosh, I just hit a eight inch piece of steel at a thousand yards or a 10 inch piece of steel at a thousand yards. This is amazing to me. And they are now hooked. You brought up in your, in in certain things, uh, the, the next generation. That's huge to me. Like I teach my kid, I teach other people's kids this stuff because I want them to enjoy these benefits, these privileges, these rights. And I want them to be able to pass that on to their kids and their kids' kids. That's what it's all about. If, if gun ownership dies with you and I, we failed as a society. Ultimately, hundred percent. And that's why I think SIG has built their brand on the slogan of never settle. Because when you do, like you said, if you get out of sync a little bit and you get rusty, it's perishable. You forget it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not like riding a bike. I don't care who you are. Houston Shaw, who's a SIG guy. I don't know how many rounds he shoots a day, but it's a lot. lot. And he refuses not to practice. And he doesn't have to practice. I mean, that dude is got mm-hmm. it, and his dad has got it. He John's in his sixties now, and I've never. I mean, the dude is unbelievable with handguns, right? But never settle. I'm not going to say I, I can't fathom the thought that I've taught my daughter enough about handguns. I haven't. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to settle with it. I want them to be. I want her to be confident. I want her to like. I've done a good job, in my opinion, of like, hey, you see daddy's guns. What's the rule? She knows it. You mm-hmm. see knives laying around, it's a rule. I do yep. my best to keep it all out of sight. But with what we do for a living, there's, they see stuff. Mm-hmm. But what we don't keep in mind is that their friends don't aren't getting that same message exactly. at home that they are. Exactly. So it's my, I don't want to settle. I don't want to settle on just being okay with a shotgun with ducks because I'm taking the responsibility to aim a loaded weapon and kill an animal. That's a huge responsibility. Like being an archer and sending it after a 2,000 pound elk and wounding that thing, that's... That's not good. That's mm-hmm. not good for me. That's not good enough for me. Never settle. I'm going to practice. I'm going to get my heart rate up. I'm going to shoot the bow like that. I'm going to crawl on my knees. I'm going to belly crawl. I'm going to take my shoes off. I'm going to do all this stuff that Remy Warren does on a daily basis, and I'm going to get better. What mm-hmm. Clay and Clint and Alex and you and you guys do on these big game hunts, I want to get better. If I'm going to take the responsibility of sending an arrow down range at a live animal. Now you can you have always the, get better, right? I, I, don't care if you should, I don't care if you put the same round through the same hole at 10 yards. Well, you can get better. Can you do it at 15? Yeah. Can you do it at 20? And can you get better at your protocol every week? And can you get... Can you get quicker? Can you do yeah, whatever it is? consistent at all of it. 100%. And your messaging and your ability to teach and your ability to talk about this stuff is like, I don't want to settle. And that's why I love SIG is that they just refuse to settle. And again, I want everybody to understand this is not a... You are not a paid no. representative <laughs> of SIG Sauer. You are a... Uh, you are a public servant that works for the police department for 20 years, defending our community and protecting our communities and our neighborhoods and our citizens, and you depend on SIG. I do. So in the future, I want to talk about all of the stuff that goes into that decision-making process of the calibers, the model, mm-hmm. the grip, what we're looking for, the home setup, the safes. Mm-hmm. Liberty Safe is a big partner of ours, and they're the absolute best. And they have handgun safes for your bedroom and for you to keep your pistol in. So there's really no excuses to settle. No. There's, it's out there. We just have to, with, with our busy tasks at hand every day and running. And I think if COVID taught us anything, is that we can slow down and everything's going to be okay. A hundred percent. I don't like COVID. I didn't uh, like the fact that we weren't allowed to have our rights and go and do things and what it did to businesses and families and, and alike. But I did like the fact that it taught me like, man, I don't need to hustle and bustle all the time. I don't mm-hmm. need to be on a plane a hundred days a year. I think it opened okay. up opened up a lot of things to a lot of people. Things were Businesses were closed, right? Or places were closed. You see a lot of people that bought trailers and went camping got back out to the outdoors and they're like backyard just barbecue this is awesome this is why haven't we been doing this for 20 years 100 which we have hunting license numbers are through the roof fishing licenses are up 700 percent. boating rv utv atv everything people want to be outside again and we want to protect our ability to do that and that's what sig is conditioned to do and their forward thinking is what makes me want to be a part of what they are we are like just 
totally blown away that we're part of the Sig Sauer family. That's Jared Woodward, the Foul Life Podcast, Sig Sauer Peace of Mind Podcast Series. A lot more coming up. We're going to talk about handguns. We're going to talk about home defense. We're going to talk about protocol. We're going to talk about choosing weapons and calibers. We're going to talk about instructional. We're going to talk about how you set your room up, your house up, how to be the safest. These alarms, do they really work? We're not just going to talk about home defense though and things that SIG would be known for in in most consumers or end users' eyes. We're going to talk about hunting and fishing and excursions and experiences and cooking and living off the land and growing a garden. SIG believes in all of it. We are not going to settle. SIG sour never settle i'm chad belding jared woodward we will be back at you with more peace of mind by sig sour right here at the foul life podcast tom jake hit that button this is leith lofton mm, i'm not going to play leith Lofton. Ah, do we want to play leith lofton for this series let's just let's just keep it the same for right now let's go with 2am logic my foul life thank you all so much for listening <laughs>